This is the Invincible Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Invincible. Episode 7, We Need to Talk. Mark. We need to talk. Welcome back, Guardians, to the penultimate episode of the Invincible Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about episode seven. We need to talk. I'm one of your hosts, Chris. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant. I there you that. go. How did that That's, happen? I don't know. But I was going to say, Chris, we need to talk. Uh, I know. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're actually Derek. And I'm, I'm one of your hosts, Chris. Derek, and that's Chris. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> He's so excited to talk about this We Need to Talk episode, he forgot his name. Yeah. Which I find even better that this is just like a Christmas present in April. <laughs> you see, what happens is I'm uh, I'm off now on holidays. It's my last day of actual work. I've got a full week off, and now I just get to podcast for a couple of days before I finish completely for the week. So I'm just completely excited at the moment. It couldn't be better. Beautiful day outside, so I'm able to go out in the garden, hopefully, for the week. But yeah, I'm I'm just overexcited and uh, and ready to talk about Invincible Curse. That's what it I is. I know because you know what? It's the penultimate. Yes, the penultimate. I love saying that word. I know you do. <laughs> it's really good. Penultimate. Yes, I am so so happy to talk about this episode. This is getting closer and closer to the reveal that I think is going to like you know with like where we basically saw. Uh, people's heads explode mm -hmm. in this episode. Gonna do that. Right. But more of a mind explosion. Because obviously if people's head exploding is a bad thing. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, they certainly like to tease us this episode. Uh, at, at the right, it was the right name for it. And we need to talk because the whole episode, it felt like, uh, we were having, uh, Nolan telling us, I'll tell you the second. I'll tell you exactly <laughs> why I did what I did. Just in one time. Just give, give me, give me a second. Calm down. <laughs> and then it gets to the end and it I ends know. with Mark, we need to talk. And then goes to credits uh, with no post credits scene, nothing. So, uh, yeah, we need to talk about this episode, Chris. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, fellow guardians, thank you for joining us. Remember, as we come into the panel, as we come into the finale of Invincible, make sure you pop over to our website to tvpodcastinterviews.com and leave us your feedback to what you think. Uh, this series so far you can uh, leave us a voicemail there or you can send the feedback to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or more importantly we would love you to subscribe so you make sure you get the finale and all our other fun things you can do that on any flying or grounded podcast service or by heading on over to tvpodcastindustries.com i think i said dot com a lot of times it's <laughs> so you far I think you did there, Chris. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but thanks so much to all of you who have been supporting us and following us for the Invincible Podcast. It's been great fun uh, talking about our first animated show, I think, uh, mm -hmm. since we started podcasting six years ago. I don't think we've talked about an animated show, so uh, a very new one for us. Yeah. Who knew there would be so much more blood than in some of the live actions that we've been doing? Very, very true. Uh, let's get into the episode, Chris. Uh, once again, shows created by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. The episode written by Simon Rakopia. Uh, this is Simon's second episode of the season. He also wrote uh, episode two as well. Uh, so he gets two big episodes uh, for the season, which is pretty cool. Uh, episode was directed by Vinton Hook. Um, Vinton has worked in probably some of the biggest animated shows of the last 10 years, including The Batman back in 2008. Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, uh, three Transformers series, uh, Young Justice, and most recently, three, four episodes, actually four episodes of uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, he's directed. So good. You love Harley Quinn, don't I you? really do. Like, if, if, no, if this has escaped anyone's radar, please watch it. Mm -hmm. It's just comedic gold. Yeah. Um, with a beautiful DC finish on it. Um, and you've got, um, some fantastic actors in there, including, uh, Kelly Cuco, um, and a, a host of other really, like, well-known voice actors, mm -hmm. uh, and celebrities just cameo drop in for this one silly little voice and then pop out. Excellent. Like, it, it's great. Excellent. And it is about as ultra-violent as, uh, as Invincible is too. Yeah, less realistic. 
But yes. as Ultra Vin, violent. Yeah, that's true. But still, like, at a similar level of violence. There's violence every episode. Definitely uh, for the adults, uh, not for the kids yes. in the family. Definitely. Uh, Chris, do you want to tell us what they gave us with the synopsis for this episode of Invincible? Sure. Feeling lost and confused, Mark looks for advice from Eve. At the same time, everyone's looking for him. And no mention of uh, of all of the violent acts that are going on from <laughs> from Omni Man in this episode at all in the synopsis or robot like or anything about robots. Like, it's just like by the way, yeah, this is this small sub story just going on in the background. No, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Like literally, the Mark part is the smallest. <laughs> Absolutely, I love the synopsis writer in this. I, I love it. I love it. Really, really good. Uh, let's start exactly there, Chris, on the smallest part of the episode. Uh, we're going to talk about our, our top points for the episode. Uh, let's kick off with, um, I guess, the repercussions of Amber and Mark breaking up in last week's episode, because they are still broken up. Um, but I like how they handle it here, uh, where William and Mark and Amber are traveling back from uh, Upstate University after last week's episode. Um, Mark chases Amber into her home and tries to tell her, He's invincible once again. We get that moment where he tries to say I'm... his own name out loud. <laughs> and then the, and then the door closes in his face. Yep. I loved it. It's either going to be the running joke that he never gets to say his own name for the mm-hmm. whole of this, not just season, but the series in yeah. general. I think he's only said it like once, maybe. Yeah. The first episode, I think he might have said it. Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to check that. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll source check that. And put, or also, we, we now have a corrections corner as well, so you can just let us know. Absolutely. Um... But I, I, I'd love to see if they don't, and it's just for forever he's never said Invincible. Mm-hmm. It's just, just going forward for the rest of it. Anyway, <laughs> continue. this is great because it does allow us to get to that point where like, he floats up through the window mm-hmm. in his costume. And he goes, but I'm Invincible. Now, this is going to explain it all away. Yeah. And yeah, she knew. She figured that out ages ago because... In a world where superheroes are real Mm -hmm. and people keep disappearing and late, you're going to start putting two and two together. Well, yeah. If William could recognize that Mark is invincible by seeing him once in the costume, surely Amber, who's been very close to Mark for uh, quite a few weeks now. Medically (laughs) close. (laughs) Medically close, yes. Surely she would recognize that that's just him. But But I love the idea that this is just because... You didn't even trust me, she says to him. So the fact that he didn't trust her, the fact that he's been making excuses constantly for everything that's been going on is the reason why they're still broken up. So uh, I like this because it's, again, it's playing on the idea of the secret identity, the keeping your loved ones in the dark um, uh, throughout comic books and throughout movies. I think that's a a really good twist on it here. Yeah, because the whole thing is, yes, I, I did it to keep you safe. Like, it's the whole, like, it's literally in every comic book. Mm-hmm. It's why Superman didn't tell Lois for years, why Spider-Man and MJ, it, yeah. it, it, it's in everything. And it always comes down to, you do, do not reveal your secret identity so that the, the, your loved ones aren't put in danger. Exactly. They cannot be linked back to you. Absolutely. And here with Mark, all he's really wearing are a pair of shades. Like, he's got his hair yeah. exposed, he's got his full face exposed other than a pair of shades. And if you don't recognize your boyfriend when he's wearing a pair of shades... That's a bit of a problem, right? It's true. It is very true. And by the way, let's talk about those shades. They uh-huh. get smashed in nearly every episode now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was. It was only recently I went. Uh, uh, mm, yeah, glass <laughs> in the eye. Like he, 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 he's getting close to glass shards in the eye every episode. But I guess that's one of his invincible powers, right? To not it get his, his eyes uh, wrecked by glasses breaking into them. <laughs> I guess that's why Art is actually still alive. Uh, the, the costume supplier Art is still alive because you got to get those replaced that often if you're in the business of Invincible and Omniland. <laughs> so uh, that's probably why you survived. Okay, all right, you might know my secret, but uh, I'm going to keep you alive. But anyway, I just liked, I just wanted to circle back on, on their on their breakup and, and their relationship. I uh, also wanted to just quickly touch on um, on William as well. So uh, so we kind of see that he's pretty much in mourning. Um, yep. And I like how they show that on screen because it's basically him eating burgers all the way throughout the episode. I think every time you see him, he's either playing with food or eating food. So he's uh, he's definitely taken solace in that after losing Rick uh, last episode. Yeah, I, I find this fun. This was the kind of like, of course, it's the old story. Boy finds boy. Boy falls in love with boy. Boy turns into cyborg. Mm-hmm. Cyborg fights boy's superhero friend. Yeah. Superhero friend has to take down cyborg boy and all of his other friends, and then government takes away Cyborg Boy, so Boy, who fell in love with Cyborg 
Borg boy ends up with nothing. It's well, that old done, story, Chris. You know? <laughs> it's amazing how often that happens. It is really like you think it would be a tired story, but it's just not. It, it, it's it's as classic as the world. Yeah. Um, I like they even make a joke about that. It's like mm-hmm. I, I like. I found the perfect man. He gets turned into a cyborg. Yep. You're like, yeah, okay. I, I, <laughs> you know, I can yeah. see that being annoying. Absolutely. I see. I have the question from the audience that doesn't read comic books and doesn't know: Is there a future here for the, for these characters? Um, the the William poses the question as to whether he'll see Rick again, and and Mark's telling him, you know, well, Cecil's got it in hand. Um, he's a good man. He'll he'll sort him out. He'll bring him back. We see later on in the episode there are more Rihanna men that have been created and. It's not Rick, as far as I could tell, because he gives an explanation to that, which we'll talk about later. But I don't want to ask the question out loud, but I know all the audience watching the episode is asking the question, will we see Rick again? Do Can we trust Cecil to do his job? Or does, well, Cecil's got quite a lot of, uh, of other stuff going on uh, on his plate at the moment. Does he really care about restoring some uh, college student back to being his former self for his boyfriend? It's a very good question okay that is all i can say <laughs> it's a good question who knows i love um, it you're like asking my mom whether we're getting dessert chris it's a good it's question a good question you'll if find you're it. if you're a good audience we might stop for ice cream yeah that's exactly it <laughs> but don't make me turn this car around um okay the the meeting with william by the way and omniman mm, yes that was fantastic yeah uh, the again, the menace in J.K. Simmons is just fantastic. I love when he gets so angry, and he's just that deadpan. And William is just quaking in his boots. Totally, yeah. Like again, you're like he goes, "Oh, Mister Omni Man, I, I mean, uh, Mister Thompson, uh, I mean." Uh, yeah, he even calls him Mister Grayson, doesn't he? Yeah. And he hasn't known his secret identity up until. This episode, Mark tells him in this episode that yeah. his dad is Omni Man. <laughs> so, uh, so, and then suddenly when he meets him in the street, he calls him Mr. Grayson. So, um, I guess revealing to him that Mark has shared the secret identity in some way as well. So, um, but I love, yeah, it's a really good, a really good moment between the two of them where, Mark, where William is answering every single question as quickly as he can because <laughs> he knows this guy looks pretty angry. Yeah. Uh, and all he gets is a big uh, fist mark in the top of his car from, um, from Omni Man as he leaves. Uh, I actually missed that point. Yeah, he's nice. holding back his uh, his rage uh, on yeah. William. So uh, William is very much right to tell him everything he knew. That was uh, good. Yeah, really, really good. This all leads to what I think is probably the one of the best parts, which is Mark finding Eve, going to Eve for mm-hmm. his advice. Uh, counsel, I think, is probably the best. Yeah. And... One of the reasons I love Eve, and I can see this, a budding relationship, a budding kind of, um, uh, we'll just call it platonic friendship first and then move on. Maybe who knows where it goes. Yeah. Is that she calls him on his shit, Mm -hmm. to put it the best way. Um, Like, he's all very, woe is me. No, it's not fair about me. And she calls him on it when he's talking about Amber. He goes, no, you did all this. Yeah. Like, I supported you to a point, but this is on you. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, it's not. And I'm done helping people and like all of this. And she yeah. just goes, well, fine, stay here and don't help people. I'm going to save the world. Yeah. That's what I think is going to be fantastic. It's fantastic foreshadowing, if we call it that, right. of her being able to essentially put him in his place and call him on his BS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like we see her still... Uh, truly saving the world. We have that moment where she's saying she was a superhero uh, with that team. Uh, what were they? What were the Teen Titans? Was that no? That's Teen not Team. One. Teen Team. That's it. Yes, they were the Teen Team. Uh, earlier on in the series, we saw that she'd been working with them for about three years, and she's saying, "In the last couple of days, I've saved more people than I did in those last three years." Doing what she's doing now, actually going out and using her powers to help the world rather than going out and beating up aliens effectively. Yeah. So um so yeah, loved her scene where she's waking up in the morning uh and making her, her coffee from scratch, uh using her powers, uh cleaning her clothes with yep. the powers, uh I guess. Uh rather making than, new clothes. Is it making new clothes from scratch? Yeah, she re she her whole thing is she can rearrange subatomic particles. Right. So she rearranges the dirt out of the old subatomic particles. But also scratch. her face and her hair. <laughs> Yes. Which I was like, oh. That seems weird, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's just like, 
Yeah. Uh, would that, you not that's... just create a shower? And uh, yeah, like exactly. That yourself. wasn't where I was going to, but like <laughs> that's the whole thing where like Superman shaves with a mirror and his heat vision, and I'm like. Yeah, no, mm. or it's like Superman gets clean by flying up into the closer into the sun and burns off all the dirt and then comes yeah. Back. But that, but that is a pretty good explanation. I remember people talking about that with the beard on Henry Cavill in uh, in Justice League or in uh, Man of Steel, where they were kind of going, "Is that because razors break when when uh, Superman <laughs> puts them towards his face? Has he got super powered hair on his face? You know, the follicles uh, are yeah. invincible. Exactly. But a, follicles of steel." A mirror and eye rays. That's pretty cool. Um, what what else is there about about Eve from this episode? What else is, is going on with her? Um, well, we we see if you pause it very quick. Like I've learned now from the Invincible at Invincible HQ on okay. Twitter, there is Easter eggs galore in every episode that I'm half, <laughs> I've missed. Like they, uh, I'll jump back very quickly. And um, back when Debbie is looking at houses mm-hmm. and is trying to sell the Red Rush's wife's house, yeah, uh, there's Easter eggs in the listings on the computer that she's looking at for the house. Oh wow, okay, like yeah. it's deep cuts. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have to rewatch this on slow, like point mm-hmm. two five speed. Thank you. Um, but uh, the on her phone, you see her as she's scrolling through her feed. Mm-hmm. Or it basically, it's her social media feed, I think, is her, their yeah. version of Twitter or whatever. You see people from the last episode thanking her for the uh, saving her vineyard. Oh, saving yes. Saving vineyard from the crops. Yes. Very good, and, yes. At Atomic Eve. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much what people would do if mm-hmm. you were a superhero. Look, it's like, hey, want me to help you? At me on Twitter. Absolutely. There we go. Right. I'm off now to save you. There you go. Actually, isn't that one of the metrics in the, in the Miles Morales PlayStation 5 game, yep. Chris? That's, uh, that's one of the things. It sets up his own social media so people can go out and, uh, and ask him for help. Yeah. Uh, so that's, so Eve has that as well, basically. Yeah. Pretty she much. has that's, her own app. Cool. <laughs> I'm like, I'm liking Eve. Uh, definitely liking the idea of a superhero, uh, going out and saving the world rather th- in, in a real way rather than, uh, rather than, just attack, just fighting off creatures and interplanetary monsters and stuff like that. So, uh, so keep an eye on her. Uh, I definitely keep an eye on the relationship between her and Mark, uh, yes. in, the, in the episode, uh, the last episode, I guess, next week. Um, our second point is, uh, robot becomes a real boy. This was the definitely, Pinocchio story. Yes. Yes. This is definitely a theory of mine about robot that there was something, um, I, possibly because of the, I guess, um, completely uncreative name of calling the robot robot. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was kind of going, yeah, I guess this, this is, this, this, that's going to be the twist, I guess, of the future. Um, but I did really like that he is so, so prepared for dealing with, uh, the Mauler twins, uh, throughout this episode. I think it's really, really good. The fact that he arrives with the hologram driver on the, on the van, knowing the Mauler twins are going to attack the van. So, uh, it sets all that up and, uh, is, ultra prepared as uh, has an option uh, knows knows to scan the body for any kind of uh, any kind of things they may have planted within the body that they've created uh, from uh, the, over the last couple of episodes that's really smart that's really uh, a really robot thing to do i guess um i guess them to remove it all and says what's what's his, what's his line to them um i would have been i would have been offended if you hadn't even tried okay, yeah exactly <laughs> to be fair you would be yeah. like it's like, hey, do you not consider me a threat? Okay, now you do. Good, I feel better. Exactly. But I love that he, he gives them uh, this option of having a, uh, a what's it, a collar that can control anybody that, that's wearing the yep. collar. Um, that's the option that he gives them if they finish their work. Um, they do finish their work, and then Robot comes back to being a superhero, effectively, and goes, right, you're going back to prison. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, the Baller Twins, while supremely intelligent in science, are very... Uh, very stupid in terms of what they expect people to do with them. They seem to be, seem to not know about the consequences of things, but are very good at science, at scientific problems, right? Hey, look, what, Mahler A to Mahler B even asked, did you call me stupid? Like, when, when they're transferring the consciousness. So, it's like, I've never seen, uh, whatever density, brain density matter like this before. Yeah. It's, it's basically signaling how ultra kind of intelligent robot was. Yes. Yeah, because he just made a copy of himself. So we ha- the question is: Is the body of Rex that he is now in as smart as the other body? Mm. Mm. 
Mm. That's interesting. I was expecting the whole time because they were doing that countdown thing that you always see at this kind of <laughs> in these kind of moments and these kind of scientific moments. They're showing the countdown. They're so, they're showing the percentage of brain power being transferred from one to the other and uh, the capacity. And I was waiting for it to break at like 70%. And it didn't. It hit the 100% to finish the transfer effectively. Um, but it will be interesting whether yeah, the, whether there's something wrong with the body that's there. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this? This is straight from the comic book. So I, yeah. this was what I was... I'm very interested to see how this goes down. Because it is a very... It's okay. It's a story as old as time. I, I knocked over. It was literally <laughs> Pinocchio. Well, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the story of a boy. He wants to be a real boy. Yeah. Although, to a degree, he what? So this is the. I don't think they fully explain this as well as I would hope. Okay. What do you understand about the real body of robot? Well, what I understand about the story here is that he had no particular intention of becoming uh, of becoming a real boy until meeting Monster Girl. Um, he's doing it for her. It feels like um, because he's. He started to fall for. We saw him trying to save her from from death, uh, much more than trying to save Samson um, in the yes. last in the last episode. So you definitely saw there was some kind of thing building up at Robot. Uh, the fact that he chose Rex Blood's body, um, and I love how this is explained in the episode when we see Rex Blood meet his younger self, effectively going, "Hang on a second, isn't this a bit creepy? <laughs> what have you done here?" The fact that he chose. Rex Blood's body because Monster Girl showed a little bit of kind of interest in uh, in the look of Rex Blood when they met first. Very creepy. Yeah. Um, he's a 30-year-old man is what we hear as well yep. from from Robot. So he's been around a, a long time. Um, he seems um, incapable of dealing with other humans, uh, which is possibly why he works well as a robot, I guess. <laughs> uh, but that, that's, I guess, what I understand about the story is that he's doing it for Monster Girl and has chosen this particular body because it's Rex Blood's younger body and she found it uh, attractive. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing, which I don't think ever got fully explained, which is a shame, the real robot cannot survive in normal atmosphere. He, yes. He basically was sealed in fluid yeah. on a life support machine. He is supremely intelligent, as we hear. Like yeah. they just don't go into it. It's like essentially he is Richter scales above other people. Right. Intelligent. Off the charts, yeah. Off the chart. Like just and his brain matter is so dense. So he but he was deformed in the way that he can't do anything. So he yeah. built robots to essentially do be his eyes and ears in the mm-hmm. world so yeah. that he could do that. It's the, the thing. Um, because the real world essentially kills him. Yeah. Real oxygen burns him. Uh, and so he was content for the last 30 years living like this. But then, yeah, he starts to fall in love with Monster Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, it's slightly different in the comic books, but yeah, essentially the same. Yeah. Um, but I just wish they had gone a bit more into that part because it's just... I, I think they skipped over that, yeah, okay, he was a human 30-year-old man who's so intelligent and now has fallen in love and now is in the body of 15-year-olds. So, look, we will see how it goes. Mm-hmm. I just think th- there is also some fantastic storylines with this yeah. character going forward. Um, and I know I, I, I know I sound like that really annoying guy in the comic book shop. Or video shop that goes. You've got to read the oh, other hundred. You've got to read the other hundred and thirty episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Star Trek. It gets really good around season eight, and there's this one particular part. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I know I sound like that. I don't mean to. Um, but there is just some amazing. Again, one of my favorite comic book series in all time. Excellent, excellent. Robots introduced in pretty much one of the earliest issues ever, mm-hmm. and. We have a story arc going all the way to issue 140 something. Yeah. With this character. Yeah. Like, it's ultimate good. Right. Because you get the peaks and troughs of character arcs. Literally, and this is what this is. Let's call this, we, you've seen a condensed version of the first arc, if you want to right. call it that. Yeah. 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 But as the non reader of Invincible, um, what I would say is they're giving a great story and putting a lot of stuff on screen. I do Good. feel there's times in the episodes I feel like they're they're reaching for stuff that must be years into things that are happening for these characters. You know, like uh, I I read something that there was one particular bit of one of the episodes that was taken from issue fifty, which is about yeah. 
what's that about four or five years of a comic book run is yeah. episode 50 right so um or issue 50 so uh so it feels like they're pulling bits all from all over the the comic yeah. book so i'm wondering where we're going next episode i know this story of omni man is one that's uh one that's resolved early enough uh in the comic books it's not about it's not 30s. something that lasted like yeah it's not something that lasted till issue 100 or anything no. so um so I suppose what I'm really saying is seven episodes into the show, I'm hoping they get a season two and I'm hoping they haven't burnt all the great storylines from <laughs> season one. So, uh, but I keep being told oh, no. no, no. And that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the, the really great part. But Excellent. you spoke slightly about Omni Man there. Mm hmm. Let's move on to, because essentially this is the, as you said, we need to talk about this point of ours, not point number three. We yeah. need to talk before we even get into the whole thing. Where you see him talking on the top of the Himalayas or the the, the Alps, mm-hmm. and it, they frame it in that way to make it look like he is talking to Mark. Yeah, I'm like, oh wow, they're blowing their load early. Oh, oh my <laughs> they, god, like they've skipped that completely. They, yes. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, this is how okay because trying to do the mental gymnastics of okay, how's this going to work later on? Mm-hmm. No, it was just beautifully, it is that, yeah, if you're going to have this really important conversation with your son or your father or your mother or your sister, your daughter, your wife, etc., you sometimes practice it in a mirror, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or you sometimes at least mentally prepare. And I thought this was cute that they were, he was preparing this conversation, except you never learn what this conversation is. Yeah. I think it's the best part. So evil, like even the conversation that he has before Debbie leaves, the first, the kind of opening scene of the episode with with Debbie uh, yeah. approaching him and giving him an opportunity to explain it to her. And as I, as I kind of joked about earlier on, his response is, you know, give me a second, we need to take time. And she's going, you've got your time, tell me right now what it was. Yeah. And he's going, I will tell you, you just need to understand and, and I'll explain it to you. And she's going, right, if you don't tell me right now, you need to get out of my house. <laughs> And it's and he doesn't tell her. And then the whole episode it is just waiting for him to say the words as to what it is that he's done and why he's done what he's done uh, with the Guardians of the Globe. So uh, I, I think it's really funny. I think it's a really a really well written way of of dealing with this issue to keep you on the tender hooks for the whole episode going into the into the finale next week. Um, but it is this this final point really is about what can stop Omni Man. We've had mentions of it throughout the show where you have this super being and it is something that people talk about with superman obviously a lot and this is the the version of superman here it's what would happen if the most powerful man on the planet turns on everybody else how do we stop him um and i I like that they brought pretty much everything in that cecil has been trying to save up to stop omni-man right from the start we have the security guys that are actually in the house of uh of omni-man waiting for him uh, to arrive home and he they show how quickly he deals with all of them as well even though they've got their invisibility gear on yeah and like that was the one of the best because you get to start you start later to see the more hazy distortion of the 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 bad guys but before to that point when he just reached out the first one where mm-hmm. he slams the guy's head down yeah. It's so instantaneous. It's just like snap and mm. then he's just down. And I'm like, what the Oh and then you get to see all the like the rest of them in there. Yeah. And it is it is. It's the Bat I don't know what the Batman protocols are. That's what I call them in my head. It's the isn't there like a whole storyline for Batman where he, he kind of basically keeps the weaknesses of all the Justice League members on file. Yeah. So in case he ever needs to kill the Flash, here's how you would do it. He plans yeah. them all. Yes, he does. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, that, but that that moment in the house where he's like pulling off the arm of invisible people, um, ripping people in <laughs> half, kicking one of them through a wall, and they they twist. <gasps> yeah. Themselves. Oh what? Yeah. And then crawls like yeah. with the, the legs facing the other direction. I was mm-hmm. like, "This is oh, brutal." Yeah, and, that, and that's was. what that's what sets up Donald's um, Cecil's second in command, uh, Donald, because. Um, RIP. That is, the agent is looking directly across the road at the house that's been monitoring their house uh, for for so long. Um, and this then leads to Donald setting off a bomb saying, you know, as you say, RIP Donald, he's uh, he's uh, gone now uh, as he sets off the bomb to try and kill, well, try and take out Omni-Man. I think uh, Cecil makes a mention that they've actually cleared out the whole neighbourhood yep. 
But even still, they can't have a big enough explosion to (laughs) affect Omni-Man. It'll only put him out for an hour or two, and then uh, the explosion dissipates, and Omni-Man is, of course, standing there absolutely fine (laughs) and ready to walk on to his next uh, challenge, I suppose. It's quite sad that we do lose our Coulson. Like, Donald is the Coulson of this Mm -hmm. series, and I think it's just hilarious that there's an element where they they both sacrifice themselves to attempt to stop the big bad of the Avengers or in Loki case and yeah. uh, in this in Omni Man. Um and neither worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, it's this kind of does it it does nothing. It literally does nothing because Omni Man goes and then looks to find Mark, continues mm-hmm. to try and find uh because he then goes to William. Uh and then it's the uh essentially the teleporter conversation between yeah. Debbie and Cecil. Mm-hmm. You have to have your watch on uh, in order to teleport. Which okay, they're they're adding a rule. Makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Um, I'll call from the comic books, which is one funny thing that they never call out here. Which is every in the comic books, the reason he was like, "Oh my god, you've you've t- teleportation technology. Like we we can go anywhere and do anything." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, it costs five billion dollars every time I use the machine." <laughs> and that's. The, there's a fun part in it where you get a scene like this where he's teleporting back and left and right and center and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and essentially you're going like five, five billion, ten billion, fifteen, mm-hmm. like a hundred billion. <laughs> and it's just like racking up. And that would have been fun because that would have been a nice Easter egg for this. Yeah. Like he could have gone ding, 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 dollar <laughs> signs. Um, but this is the fun part because we do get Cecil attacks Omni Man and he's like, do you think that would hurt? And it's like, no, like it was to get your attention mm-hmm. while we attempt other things and essentially fires in the a- anime. What did you think of this? Cause you did ask me, did they come back? Yeah, absolutely. I was really surprised it was this quick. This is yeah. the kind of thing I meant, whether they were pulling stuff from much later on in the comics to burn some, not burn some storylines to use some storylines from later on in the comics. Cause I felt like DA Sinclair was taken away last episode. Yeah. And we kind of felt, you know, he's going to be using him for, for some purpose. Um, this is, he seems very interested in this kid who's created, uh, the Rihanna man. Um, and to see these uh, cyborgs back one episode later, a new army effectively to go up against Omni Man, uh, seemed really surprising. Cause I don't think any time has passed since the battle with the Rihanna men. That was like yesterday because William and, uh, and Mark have just arrived home. So 48 hours, I think. That's yeah. the kind of like the gist. But hey, it's a it's a cartoon. It's yeah. a, it's an animated show from a comic book. I could let that slide, but it just felt because D. A. Sinclair had only been with them for a really short time, it felt really surprising that he'd been able to to sort it out. But then again, he did do his work pretty quickly. He kidnapped uh, Rick on a Saturday, I think, of the weekend, and then by the Sunday he was already a Rihanna man. So yeah. Um, yeah. So he does work. Um, and we do get told these Rihanna men are previous soldiers. Yes. Doing their country a service one last time. Mm-hmm. Um, which is interesting. One last time because yeah. we do, they do get brutally murdered once again yeah. by, uh, by Nolan. <laughs> they really do. Um, this is, this is new for the, new for the show. Right. This is, a, even this for me is a weird one. It feels too pulled forward. Right. Like it's, pu- it is dramatically pulled forward. Yeah. I suppose, look, no one is watching this for, like, David Attenborough-level realism. Of course it's like, not. planet Earth is <laughs> like, well, technically, it would take this long. Yeah, you may have turned that off after episode one, uh, if you're yes. looking for realism. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so, no, I think, and you're right, it's a comic book. I just think it, 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 it does feel slightly out of place, but then you're like, eh, grand. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll roll with it because you're seeing cyborgs fighting Omni-Man. Exactly. And there's another uh, five more battles that he has to have, including (laughs) the laser from space, which I thought had actually worked. I thought that the the laser that had pushed Omni-Man into the Earth as it was pounding down on top of him. Uh, And then, unfortunately, as always, with any type of gun, it has to kind of be reloaded to be used again. (laughs) And by the time it's reloaded, Omni-Man takes it out of space and destroys it. So, uh, So, yeah, another completely useless tool that is the one where they talk about the expense of creating that and how, how much it costs every time they fire the uh the laser so i guess that's similar to the teleportation device of the comic books that they yeah. that, that's where the joke sits yeah yeah but this one hurt me because they just killed those birds 
They did not need to show those birds dying from the radiation poisoning. That, that was, was just like senseless, like, ow. Come and on. All, all the woodland animals being caught in Bur- the initial blast as well, <laughs> like, just burning up. They really yeah. did, like, they went a bit like, I was like, oh. Okay, okay, we we didn't need to see poor like Bugs Bunny getting like slowly <laughs> cremated to death, and then like Daffy Duck basically dying from radiation poisoning. <laughs> like that. Ow! I'm not Peter or anything, but ow! <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good show, a good way to show the the power of the weapon yes, that they exactly, were using, exactly. especially, especially because nothing's had any effect on Omni Man at this stage. So it's kind of showing you this is now. A level way up from the bomb that was set up by Donald. Yeah. Uh, because they're now out in the desert. They can they can do this. But there is still a cost, even though it's in the desert, right? There is, because <laughs> we still see the second shot. Nothing happens. But it does ring true. And it ignites. And Adam Eve and poor old Mark able to see the sprinkling and the explosion. And come a-running. Uh-huh. But then we get what... The essentially what I love, one of the best is the kaiju. Yes, absolutely. Amped up on steroids. Mm-hmm. I love how they just say, we pumped him with the best shit we could give him. And I'm like... <laughs> like and send him out to fight you. Yeah. He's blaming like, you for everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right. So you, you basically just, you've just roided out a kaiju. I'm like, all right. Yeah. No, that would, that was fun. I liked the idea of that. Like, yeah, and it's it's a callback back to episode three, isn't it? That yeah. uh, that Cecil had said, you know, um, you had a bit of trouble with that kaiju. Maybe we should put that on ice um, so that we can use it in case of this happening. But it does beg the question, of course, if you are trying to stop your greatest villain, effectively, if he, if if Omni Man turns on you and you're trying to find something to stop him, and that something is alive that he stopped before, well, how the hell do you stop that thing that beat Omni Man then? If you have no more weapons, effectively, so, uh, Cecil, so, so yeah, he, he basically that that's the one where like he takes out a little pen, clicks it three times, and a little bomb goes off in the back of the kaiju's brain or something. <laughs> Maybe it's just like, yeah. uh, or it's basically Mark. Their expectation is Mark will be able to. Beat the guy, mm-hmm. Um I like this. This was this continuous. What do you? What do you? There was a old Greek one where you have to like the twelve levels of hell that you have to keep kind of battling through different gates, uh, and each gate of hell is progressively worse and harder and so. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what we're seeing here. Omni Man is continuously he's beating down everything Cecil's throwing at him. Yeah, and Cecil's constantly having to throw. Like, the pits of hell. Like, I was expecting Dark Blood almost level stuff to come out. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was definitely getting, uh, def- definitely getting, um, some visions of the Invincible video game that this is exactly how it would yes. be. Like, like Mortal Kombat kind of thing where, <laughs> uh, where each stage is a, is a greater, greater, uh, enemy for, uh, for Omni Man. But it does lead to the team up effectively. And Mark even calls it out. It's time for a team up, me and dad taking down. Uh, the kaiju because nobody's been able to get in contact with him since his phone broke uh, back at the attack in in, uh, in upstate university so yep. uh, so yes we have a team up here between the two of them and they still are struggling against this kaiju um it's not an easy fight no i think there's no, even no. points when uh, when we see debbie's watching on uh, from from back in, in headquarters uh, and you see mark uh, stuck in between the teeth of this kaiju about to be bitten down on before uh, before Omni Man saves him. So um so yeah, it does see, it does seem like this this would be a massively difficult challenge for for each of them, but together they're able to take him out. Yeah. And then we get the introduction of the fun the uh the third wheel, if you will. The uh spoke the spanner in the works, the uh, I can't think of any old tired uh kind of cliches. So what I will just say is the immortal Chris has run out of cliches. Oh no, I, I've never run out. I just I can't think of any right now. Give me a second. Uh, oh no, it's okay. It's yeah, okay, 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 sure, okay. <laughs> you sure? Yes, let's, let's go on to the reveal of the immortal. You did kind of tease this back in episode two when we were talking about uh, about the character called immortal. Um, possibility of them coming back. Wasn't <laughs> expecting it the way that it the way that it came from. So um, I think the setup in this episode of having a collar to control anybody and the Mahler twins saying that they were going out to get the immortal in the post credit scene a couple of episodes ago. Piece that all together. Yeah. Wasn't expecting a uh, rage filled immortal just to go straight after Omni Man after returning. Uh, very cool moment. I I love that you get to see the immortal throughout the years. That was so fun. Mm. 
that was giving me flashbacks to the to the movie uh, Highlander because I think you yeah. see him you see him as uh, in a kilt I think at the start or it's some some kind of civil war uh, early on and then we see him kind of through the ages. He was Abe Lincoln. That was, I guess, Abe Lincoln survived the assassination attempt. Yeah. Then um, it was the immortal that was yeah. taking his place at the time, or was him at the time? Yeah. I guess is the is the reason. Yeah, that's the thing. This is the, I, I one of the this is the character I said I, I yeah I teased, which was his name's immortal. Mm-hmm. He's gonna come back. He's back. Um, it's great because you do get the yeah. It's essentially I think he touched a big magic glowy orb with his sword back when the cut the the Vikings, the Celts, the Scots, mm-hmm. all of that were all fighting together. The Norse um, became immortal. Right, you cannot kill him. Right, as long as his bits are together, he comes back to life. Now you so, say bits are together, and uh, here we find his bits ripped apart completely by Nolan. Um, yeah. But I, th- I still think he's probably a little more together than he was when Nolan took his head. Uh, yeah, exactly. One. So, um, so yeah, we'll probably see Immortal again after this, though. Yeah, he's but, he's Immortal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the bigger implication here is that this was all on TV because we yeah. had two camera crews here watching on. So um, we're watching another show where this pretty much exact same thing just happened that we've uh, we've just recently seen the implications of that we're not going to talk about that show we're going to talk about invincible <laughs> but um yeah this is one where the world is watching on and so's mark yeah. um mark has been fighting alongside uh nolan for this whole battle but sees him uh pull apart a former superhero that uh he hadn't been told that nolan has killed now a second time i suppose um and that's kind of yeah. It looks like it's uh, it's it's weighing on Mark. He knows there's something really wrong with his dad now. Yeah, because literally, like you get to see the kaiju hogtied mm-hmm. behind Mark, and Mark's just floating there with his dad, which such such a silhouette. I want to hand it to the director on that one. Mm-hmm. Just seeing Nolan drop the two body pieces, mm-hmm. his hand. Up to his elbow, still covered in blood. Yeah. Because that death, I want to call it out. Like, five fun, five finger death punch literally threw carves through the immortal. Mm-hmm. And I know he had seen that take his head, but like, he, it, it's like he cut with a knife and then became, put, closed his fist. Yeah. To make it the hammer. And I was like, oof. Like, and the way they did it was just, I, I want to, Beautiful is the wrong word. The, uh, the animation style, the choice of mm-hmm. way they did, which was it, it slowed and you saw the, the resistance. Yeah. Of coming out the other side. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it just everything slowing and then speeding back up and just then like the, the silhouette of, as I said, the silhouette of Omni Man, the, the, the zoom in on Mark going mm-hmm. dad and then Mark, we need to talk. Yeah. Dung. Absolutely, and even just the the idea that just before dying, uh, Immortal has pushed his fingers almost oh, yeah. through the eyeballs of uh, of Nolan, showing that he can be affected at least by something, and the Immortal could have been that person. So, um, so I wonder is that a clue to why um, why Nolan's done what he's done, where the Guardians a threat to him? Um, in the future, maybe that was the reason. And now that Mark's got his powers, they're a threat to his son, and that's the reason he did it. Uh, I think the only real indication that we get through this episode is um, we wouldn't have been safe, and you don't know whether he's talking about the planet wouldn't have been safe, or whether he's talking about him and Debbie wouldn't have been safe, and him, Debbie, and Mark, or just Mark. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing next week when that uh, conversation continues, or will it just be another episode of... We'll tell you next season if we get a season <laughs> of what happened. Or go read my comic books. <laughs> they, yeah, they have to. I, I, I don't think they, they... I think they're going to have to do it very early on in the beginning almost of the next episode because essentially they built it up so much in this this episode mm-hmm. alone. Just that we yeah. need to talk. This And this, they started giving the conversation. They actually... The, 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 well, at least Nolan's side of it at the mm-hmm. beginning... We'll and get I it think, next week. I, no, we'll and I, I do. I just... It landed so hard in the comic books. Right. And I'm hoping it lands as hard in this. And I think it's going to be so fun to see the reactions. I really want to see from our fellow Guardians mm-hmm. what they think. I want to see what you think. 
I, and I'm going to go through what I thought when I originally read the comic books and I'll talk to you about like what I thought when I kind of obviously watch the next episode and see Excellent. how it compares and things like that. But I think it's just going to be one of those, Oh, and then the questions, be, the, 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 the penny drops. And you remember that you have those little toys where you put the penny at the top and goes ding, 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 ding. Do ding, I remember down. Chris? That is now a daytime TV quiz show where they have uh, the coin dropping down, uh, to answer questions. Yes, I absolutely remember this. Oh my God. That's a day. They make anything a game show now. Yes, they will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, back onto this show. I can't wait to see the puzzle pieces click for a few. Mm-hmm. I think Absolutely. that's going to be the fun part. Absolutely. Um, and I also want to see your face. I'm not going to get <laughs> actually, due to COVID, I won't get to see your face. I'll get to talk to your face after. I may. I, as I say, I'm off on, on annual leave and holidays next week, Chris, and I think you might be off as well. So maybe I might I might uh, Skype you into my first watch at uh, oh my 6 a.m. Oh, my God, that so fun. Oh, no, it'll be 6 a.m. You're right. Uh, yes, I will not no, Skype you. No. I might just record it and send it to you, Chris. Yes, that, that would be good. That, that. That's actually, actually, no, we're going to, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to see your reacts. <laughs> I'll see. 6 a.m. Yeah. Is, is still 6 a.m. Uh, not not usually up for cameras at that time of the morning, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, that's it, I think, for all of our major points for the episode. Anything that we want to call out that we haven't talked about, Chris? Uh, just one really quick bit from me, which is the coffee mug. Again, this is a nice little callback. I talked mm-hmm. about the Easter eggs. The coffee mug that uh eve is using is the teen team logo oh and right it comes literally we saw this back in the second episode on the uh-huh. tower it like literally it it's that like reference to the earlier thing oh my god Excellent. um and then the immortal being ripped in two mm-hmm. uh is literally panel for panel storyboard for storyboard if you want to go animated for animated uh from issue 10 Right. Of good. the comic books. And seeing that rip in two is just, oh, well, seeing that for the first time was amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, really, really good stuff uh, in this episode. And again, it, it feels like that seems really early. Episode 10 seems really early for that big moment uh, to be revealed to the world, I suppose, that Nolan is is a murderer um, as opposed to someone that fights against uh, against bad guys. Um, <laughs> it, that feels really early, but I know that that's the story. That's the premise of of, uh, of Invincible. So uh, it's really good to see on screen. Uh, the only one for me, I just really liked the fact there was no uh, no music and no, um, no post-credits scene yes. after that we need to talk about it because it is going just come back next week we don't need to we don't need to give you any more now we're done we're getting out of here <laughs> off we go <laughs> i was kind of hoping that they'd shadow drop it just like beyonce just like later on today they'd be like you know what oh, boom the last episode why the would last they do episode. that the i fa- know the finale of, cause... the finale of falcon the winter soldier was also on, on the same day they need to cut their leash out they've got a, a, a full week Next week with nothing big coming out. Oh, that's true. This will be the big one uh, for for Invincible coming out next Friday. And everyone has time to binge it. If your friends aren't watching the show, get them to watch this and then they're just in time for the finale. Absolutely, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully everybody will catch up in time for next week's uh, finale. Chris, do you defend Invincible Episode 7? We need to talk. Yeah. No beating around the bush, as I have not done for many of these episodes. Yes, 100%. I uh, defend this. I think... They're doing everything right. The one thing I'll call out is just they may, I think they, they, the Annie Men pull from so early, later on in mm-hmm. the comic book runs, the, the series just feels as you, it feels out of place. Yeah. It's it just slightly, oh, how'd they do that? Uh, so it may, it does kind of make you, huh? If you, if you're, watching as intently as the rest of us yeah if, you, um, if you're thinking better for a podcast that's the kind of thing that pop in yes. your head yeah um why is the level five bad guy uh has been created in 24 hours <laughs> but yes. hey as we say d.a sinclair a much smarter man than i am so uh so potentially he's uh he has created them really really quick uh that there's, there's a reason <laughs> yes but then derek do you defend this episode I really defend this episode yeah I, I really enjoyed this episode i think i think this idea of stretching out the uh what is it that nolan's done why has he done it the idea of stretching out the way they did throughout this episode was really good and as i say the level by level uh increasingly more difficult ways of stopping nolan again another 
another great way to, to get to deliver the episode the way they've delivered. And also just the side stuff. I thought William was hilarious in this episode, some really <laughs> good uh, funny moments with him. And I love the idea that Amber had always known that Mark was invincible or had known for a very long time, let's say, uh, that Mark was invincible. I thought that was uh, that was dealt with really well. Um, yeah, really enjoying the series and really uh, happy with this as the penultimate episode leading into hopefully a very exciting finale uh, next week. Yeah. Let's get on to some feedback, Chris. Uh, yep. Got a couple of couple of uh, messages into us uh, about uh, about Invincible. Uh, first up, we got an email in from Parthenia Locklear. Uh, had some general thoughts in the series because she hadn't been able to send us an, uh, an email across the across the show so far. She says, "Hey guys, I've really been enjoying your coverage of this show. I've also really been enjoying Invincible as well. It's an adult cartoon that I've been waiting for. It's not like when you watch anime with the over exaggerated voiceovers and horrible translations." <laughs> Mark really didn't take enough time choosing his hero name at all, though, did he? I totally get back in episode six when he had his, has his ass handed to him, and now that he's ma- that's making him reevaluate his future as a superhero, also it makes him take his relationship and friendships more seriously. I'm glad that his best friend figured out who he was. Finally, someone can see that their friend is actually the hero, which is part of their face covered. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel that Amber came down a bit too hard on him, just assuming that he ran away. He had a very plausible story of going to get help. Also, I was very shocked about him making permanent plans to go to college with her, but then doesn't tell her that he's invincible, which would solve his problems with her. It makes me think perhaps he really isn't done with being a super just yet, and he's still grappling with his emotions as teenagers do. Finally, I was very surprised that the episode did not mention him seeing his father as he was almost dying. I'm sure it will come up later. I just expected it to be this episode. Did Nolan kill the tailor? How long uh, will he entertain this rift between him and his wife? I think he would totally kill her if he had to. Also, can Black Samson not feel that his powers have possibly returned? What were his powers anyway? Thanks, guys. Keep up the good reviews and keep the coffee and wine flowing from Parthenia. Uh, it's really interesting points there, Parthenia. Um, and a lot answered in this episode. Um, yeah. So really the reason why Amber came down hard on Mark, as hard as she does on him, was because he didn't even give her the real excuses. He made up lies to cover the fact that he was invincible rather than uh, rather than actually saying to her he was. And he tried to and paused like he did in this episode. So, uh, so yeah, I think that's the real reason why Amber was so hard on him. Agreed. And uh, just in terms of uh, Nolan killing the tailor, I mm-hmm. hope not. Yeah. I hope uh, he's still alive because uh, Mark Hamill's amazing. That's true. <laughs> That's I, true. I, I but as, as I mentioned earlier on, the idea of replacing your suit every week when it gets ripped in battle, that, that it's only a certain number of people have those sets of skills. Yes. And he seems to have worked with art for a very long time as well. So uh, so potentially um, he he hasn't killed him yet. Yes. <laughs> in terms of Black Samson, we see in this episode that he um, he knows he's got his powers back uh, at this stage. He kind of felt that he was more powerful it, just as he woke up effectively from his coma uh, last episode. But this episode, he even has a new outfit, I think. Uh, in this episode, he no longer has the uh, the uh, robot suit or the um, the power suit that he was wearing earlier on in the season. He's got his uh, his new superhero suit. Uh, Chris, any idea what his powers were? Yeah, so his uh, powers were kind of... Uh- Analogous to Black Lightning in the DC universe, in that he's got flight, strength, durability, and some form of elect, less so than Black Lightning, who can actually shoot lightning from his hands. Hence the name. Black Samson has more just kind of like sparks and a bit of, a bit of electricity. But he it's could shoot more Samson's he, from his hands. I guess. Yes, exactly. Little right. small versions of himself. <laughs> no. Yes. No, he can't do that. Ah, okay. no. Uh, no, he's just more. It's his whole thing is pretty much. He think Luke Cage, but with a small bit of electricity bolts. But he's okay. mostly known for, in the comic books, losing his powers, getting the being original Guardians of the Globe, losing his powers, getting the suit, the a power suit, becoming a new Guardian member of the Globe. Mm-hmm. And then kind of, again, getting his powers back only to who knows what happens. Exactly. Well done. Well caught, Chris. Well caught. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much, Prathenia, for your feedback. Uh, we also got some Facebook feedback from Dr. Bob Phillips. Yes. Dr. Bob had this to say about the final episode. So Amber had figured it out all along. And why wouldn't she? She's super bright. Superheroes exist, etc. And frankly, has made the right choice when it comes to uh, Mark. Mm. I think the pinnacle of power is the ability to make coffee with the flick of an atomic hand from when you're under your covers. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even at least have a different outfit to sleep in? No? 
As for the bloody mess of multiple eviscerations, I'm so impressed with the quantity of colon on display. <laughs> it's seriously underplayed in most stories and lovely to see them revel in it here. Robot isn't a robot, check. Robot loves Monster Girl, check. DA Evil gets the cyborgs used by Cecil, check. Where's Damien Darkblood to save the day? Ooh. Or will it be Eleven? After all, it's a Demogorgon that's been let loose in the fields of fury. Wow, that was a deep cut Stranger Things reference in the end there. Yes, it um, was. Yes. Yes, yes, okay. I, I, I followed that and the Demogorgon. It was actually a kaiju, but we'll let it slide. We'll <laughs> let it slide. Absolutely. It's very hard to tell the difference between Demogorgons and, and, and kaiju as well. Not if you're a yeah. D&D player. Hold on. Oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> True, true. Um, I love your reference there, Doctor Bob, to uh, to the multiple eviscerations with lots of colon on display. I think even in uh, in this episode, we had um, a camera shoved uh, into someone's colon, uh, <laughs> so do. just so Cecil uh, <laughs> could see exactly what was happening to his people. Um, yeah, th- like this is a really good, a really good episode. Uh, where is Damien Darkblood? There is a line from nolan in this episode where he talks about his suit and why he kept it the one he killed the guardians of the globe with and he says um he kept it to kill damien darkblood we obviously haven't seen that so it sounds like he was keeping the suit so he could kill damien darkblood ending the investigation that he had is that i think that's what he meant by that line yeah i kind of took it from that too it was a bit of a it was a bit of a weird one Mm. In that, yeah, he's, I think he was trying to say that yes, I've I kept the suit above my door frame in my kitchen mm. to entrap Damien Darkblood so that I could kill him, maybe, and stop the investigations. Where and it just stopped anyway because Cecil sent Darkblood back to hell. Yeah, and he had the information he needed. Yeah, <laughs> which he didn't was need that, yeah, yeah, he didn't need him anymore. Yeah, uh, interesting stuff. Thanks so much for your feedback, Doctor Bob. Uh, next up, Donald Dennis says, another action-packed episode and filled with tense action. I feel pretty pleased with myself for figuring out Robot wasn't just a robot, but I guess I didn't get full credit because I didn't guess it was just a drone being piloted remotely. I don't really blame Amber for still being upset after five months of erratic behaviour, but she could have come clean with Mark that she knew earlier. I hope she's still part of the series because she was the interesting person in that coupling. The kaiju fight was pretty neat, and I was kind of surprised that Mark kept it alive and tied it up instead of putting it down. Heck, Amber even busted Mark's balls for running away when she knew he was the one fighting the robot men. That I have a little problem with. Thanks, Donald. Yeah, I suppose it's just one of those things with Amber. She kind of felt like she was expecting Mark to tell her. It's his kind of secret to tell, almost, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Like, I suppose it's... If your superhero boyfriend is actually a superhero and you figure it out and you're like, why hasn't he told me yet? I know he's doing this. Like, exactly. Yeah. It, it, personally, I'm with Mark. Like, okay. I, and I'm with Donald kind of going, she should have kind of just went, Hey, like, and she covers his, the, the top part of his face with her hand uh-huh. at some point and goes, you know, you look a lot like, like drop the hints at least that you, you know. Um, right. I'm kind of with Amber here, you know, the, the idea that he wouldn't trust her. This is months of their relationship kind of thing, you know, and he's he's tried to tell her a few times. He's he's kind of stuttered, saying <laughs> I'm uh, a couple of times, but uh, but yeah, I think he should. I think he should have told her. I think uh, I think it's all on, all on her. This is why you and I will never work as a romantic pairing. That's true. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Thanks, Donald. Thanks, Donald. Next up, we also got a tiny bit of feedback from Ray Felix, who said, I thought Omni was going to kill his wife. Who knows? He may, he still may. Great cartoon. Yeah, th- this is very true. Like, it, it was, there was a potential there where he was kind of bawling his fists. Mm-hmm. Like, last night he'd kind of broken that hole in the wall, and then now he just broke a hole in the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was kind of going, you know, when she told him to leave the house and he flew up through the ceiling, I was kind of going, yeah, they're probably not going to be able to come back uh, to this house. And then he destroyed the house completely in that fight with the uh, with with the agents uh, around the around the house, uh, completely destroyed the house. So luckily, she's in re- she's in uh, realty, right? So um, so she should be able to get. Oh, a she'll new find house. a new. She'll find a new one. Also, <laughs> like Cecil, will buy her a new one. Probably, probably. I do, I do feel though, uh, that Debbie is in a dangerous position with Nolan. I know, I know exactly what you mean, Ray. Um, I did feel like getting her out of there was the right choice. Yes, 100%. We also got a voicemail in from Greg Schwamm. Hey, Derek and Chris, this is Greg. 
So apparently Robot really just, all of his machinations were all so that he could become a real boy, or at least a non-deformed boy with, uh, able to have a companion in Monster Girl. Like, I get that. And he's not a real robot. It's crazy. I really like the concept that, uh, that Robot and all of his different variations uh, were just drones being controlled by the very non-nefarious uh, and heroic uh, human shell. Um, although I don't necessarily know that the, the science holds up with the transfer of brain power and whatnot, given the increased cerebellum size. And I don't know if new Rex would, I don't know, maybe, maybe a robot gave uh, the Mahler twins some pretty solid uh, information and, and, and background. Anyway, the thing, big things besides the, this robot or in this episode, besides the robot, which I was a little bit disappointed that the younger robot wasn't also joy voiced by Jason Manzukas. Um, but, um, the very Peter Parker ish attitude of Mark, uh, regard, regarding his heroing business. Like, you know what? I screwed up everything. I can't do this anymore. I don't know how many times we saw Peter do that throughout the Spider-Man runs, but it was a lot. Uh, but I really like the, I like Eve and her, you know, Hey, you've got with great power comes great responsibility and it's your duty to help people out. Um, and then the, uh, super hero or super powered Kaiju ends up being beaten by Mark who, you know, maybe Omni man could have handled him eventually, but, uh, but, uh, you know, Omni man was busy re killing the re, uh, reanimated, restored immortal. So, uh, immortal just kind of had a, a bad, bad series of episodes. All right. Look forward to the podcast and, they really enjoyed the episode. Thanks. Bye. Immortal definitely did have a bad day <laughs> once again, didn't he? Yeah, he's just like, yeah, I was, I was alive. I'm dead. I wake up. Where's, where's Omni Man? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Exactly. We didn't actually talk about it much on the podcast that it was uh, Mark that stopped the kaiju. And does that make him more powerful than Nolan? So, um, so I know that there is the whole speculation from, uh, from Cecil. Cecil, uh, that's, that Mark is the only one that can take down Nolan, but Nolan wasn't able to take down the Kaiju alone. Mark did and tied him up. So, uh, I wonder, is that an indication that, uh, that Mark is more powerful than Nolan? Could be. Could mm. be. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, I, I do like the idea that Mark is uh, de facto Peter Parker with the walk away. Mm-hmm. Anytime, anytime anyone talks about Spider Man, Peter Parker walking away, literally it's, I think of the Spider-Man No More cover, where Absolutely. it's basically the suits in the bin. Yeah, and yeah, I hear, I see it in my, in my head every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I could see them doing something like that mm-hmm. in, in season two or something like where they 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 do a freezer. Because if you're not, um, please jump over to Twitter and some of the other kind of social media channels for Invincible, um, particularly because they have just every week they come out with. Uh, artwork for each of the episodes mm-hmm, the posters yeah the posters really good. and they're yeah. just i derek's been sharing them in our facebook group yeah but yeah they and you do see some of the relation to spider-man in this absolutely yeah. absolutely thanks so much for your voicemail greg yeah thank you so much greg we are going to close out our feedback section with a voicemail from steve brown Hey guys, it's Steve, and I just finished Invincible episode seven, seven. <laughs> we need to talk, and uh, wow, really, really good. Um, a couple of quick things. Um, Nolan says the name of the episode at the end, at the very end. I thought that was great. Um, and that reveal that Amber has known all along that Mark was invincible, that's an interesting wrinkle that we've never really explored in these tropes of superhero, where she... It's not that she doesn't trust him because he he was running away or she thought he was he was being a coward. She doesn't trust him because he didn't trust her with his secret earlier. I and you know, Eve kind of confirms that that well, yeah, maybe you should have revealed yourself to her. I thought you'd figure that out yourself, but that was uh and then I loved, absolutely loved the voice switch. And I did the Amazon prime uh trivia thing that said that they they had ross marquand actually try to be like like mimic uh 
Jason Menzoukas' voice as a younger person, but with the cadence of Zachary Kunto's character robot. So it's really great to see uh, and hear Ross Marquand and his just he's got some great voice acting chops. All right. Uh, can't wait to watch it again. Uh, talk to you guys later. I absolutely love Ross Marquand. If you don't know who he is, he was in uh, in The Walking Dead. He was a, he's, he's still in The Walking Dead, uh, and he also took over the role of uh, Red Skull in uh, in Avengers uh, Endgame. He played about four or five characters that started this season as well. I don't think Ross Marquand has actually done a massive amount of animated shows before now but i know he does impersonations uh, and he's been well known for uh, for recording his impersonations there's a great youtube video i think he does about 12 or 13 impersonations on it uh, go check him out but uh, you're totally right steve that is so cool that, he, that that was the direction he was given uh here's the actor that plays explode try and do him with the actors with the cadence of the actor that plays robot merge the two of them together oh and also can you make him younger as well can you make him like 12 or 13 as well and ross Marcon pulled it off really well you could tell what he was what he was doing there it didn't sound like either character but sounded like a bit of a mix of both so uh really really cool yeah i i love ross and i love jason jason for me i have been a fan of since the days of the league um, he was in the league, which is a U.S. comedy show. Um, mm-hmm. and it's a U.S. American football comedy show, I should say. Um, and it, it did sound, it sounded like a teenage Jason Medukas. There you go. Like, and I was like, okay, he, he nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't name drop there either and say that I say that I interviewed uh, Ross Workand uh, up on stage in London in front of uh, in front of a couple of thousand uh, Walking Dead fans. Um, I was which waiting was pretty for awesome. that. Yeah, I, I know. To- <laughs> you, for- you forgot uh, that I did that, Chris. Uh, about two years ago, actually. Yeah, uh, two years ago back last we week. Had- yeah. Yeah, back when we could be outside and see people and yeah. touch people, and you got to touch him. I he, did. he did shake my hand, and he was yes. absolutely lovely. He met me before the interview. He was, was really really nice. He, he was he was low. No, he I was sweaty. Uh, I, I, was one, I was the one nervous. <laughs> Dripping with wet. <laughs> the handshake didn't last very long because of my sweat. No, yes. no, no, not at all. True professional, uh, lovely guy too. Um, and I'm so glad to see that he's getting more roles on the show. He's I think he's played more characters in the show than anybody else because he played what three characters in the first episode, and then obviously with Immortal returning this episode, I think he probably uh, provided the grunts and groans uh, for Immortal <laughs> in that fight, uh, the episode here, and Young Robot as well. So, uh, so yeah, he's gotten loads and loads of parts and well deserved uh, really like exactly it. thanks so much once again for your voicemail steve really good to hear from you yes thank you so much steve and thank you so much for everyone sending in your voicemails your feedback so far we are down to we are this is it this is the end of the penultimate episode <laughs> of our penultimate episode review of invincible um so yeah make sure you get in any total feedback you have for the next episode ahead mm-hmm. of schedule so go on over to tvpodcastindustries.com where you can leave us a voicemail or you can send us a voicemail or e- just a standard email we take text we read it out by sending it to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com mm-hmm. don't forget you can also subscribe and make sure you never miss an episode by going to any flying or grounded invincible or squishy podcast catcher service right. and we are there we can head on to tvpodcastindustries.com and you find all the links and like the subscribes the shares the reviews any reviews is always welcome five stars always best if it's a one <laughs> star just just don't it's okay so absolutely and weak. really important that chris mentions that here because we're coming up to the last episode of invincible i know loads of our listeners are subscribing on the boys and invincible podcast uh specifically for those shows but we do cover lots more over on tv podcast industries we'd love if you jumped over to our main feed where you get access to everything that we podcast about uh, over at tv podcast industries.com we'll be back later this weekend with the finale of falcon and the winter soldier episode six which aired today on disney plus i'm looking forward to talking about that one with you chris Oh, oh yes it's gonna be fun i know you haven't seen it yet either and you're excited i haven't i'm literally (laughs) finishing this recording and going downstairs to watch it uh it is going to be a good one ladies and gentlemen Mm -hmm. but don't forget you can support us over on patreon.com slash tv podcast industries where just for a dollar a dollar dollar bill you can help keep the podcast servers going the wheels going and more importantly our producer extraordinaire our director our editor the (laughs) one and only co-host derek in coffee and at this point in night in red wine because or at least a beer uh because it takes a while to keep editing late into the 
wee hours mm-hmm. because I won't do it. Yeah, I'm terrible. Give me, give me the slack. Give, <laughs> pay him and give me the slack. Well, you know, the best thing we can do, Chris, is close out the podcast right Thank there. You. Thanks so much for joining us this time. We'll be back with the finale of Invincible next week. Yes, thank you so much. Keep watching, keep listening, and keep being invincible. Bye.